Welcome to another special edition of McGuire's Car Crazy. This week, we've crossed the Atlantic and headed north to the beautiful country of Finland. We're hanging out with the car guys of Helsinki who enjoy their cars all year long, even when the sun doesn't shine. It's a brotherhood. You're always welcome here. We're going underground to the hidden clubhouse and working garage of the Hekama Car Club. It's a uh, Finnish word what means something like passion. Ah. Then we're heading close to the Russian border to check out a fabulous but remote car collection on a resort whose focus is on rehabilitating dressage horses. The horses you have here, they're like Ferraris. Now that's a new take on horsepower. We have all that and more, and it all starts right now, right here on McGuire's Car Club. It's car crazy. The snow and ice are gone and the sun is finally shining here at Helsinki. Finland's biggest car show is about to begin and the car guys are gearing up big time. But how do they keep enjoying their cars during the winter time when it's dark 24 hours a day? One of the phenomenons here in Finland are these car guy garages that are popping up all over the country where car guys can come and store their cars. Imagine the long winters. This is a warm place to keep their cars and share their stories and just hang out. I can't tell you where this is. Again, it's a secret place, but it's a very special place. Come on, enjoy it with me. Come on. How cool is this? A clubhouse with a fully equipped garage where car guys hang out at all hours of the day and night. You gotta love it. I love this place. <laughs> it's entirely different from most of the places I've been around the world, but it's home. You know what I mean? So meet Bert Palmtree, right? <laughs> Bert, how do we say your name? Berti Palamo. Berti Palamo, but I gotta call you Bert. Yeah, that's okay. And, and Palamo means? Palm tree. Palm tree, so yeah. Bert Palm tree. But anyway, <laughs> I love your passion. You've been hanging out with these guys for a long time. How many years? About 25, yeah. So the name of the club is what? Hekuma. Hekuma. Yeah. What does Hekuma mean? It's a uh, Finnish word what means something like passion. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I take it each person has their own space. Yes. Uh, everybody's got their own garage in here. Yeah. But some neat cars here. Yes, it really yeah, is. Yeah. This is your baby. Yeah. What year? Uh, 67. 67. Yeah. Plymouth Fury. Yeah. Needs a little work. <laughs> a bit. Yeah. <laughs> Why do you love this car? Well, I like the looks of it, you know. There's a really mark is. of an old engine fire yeah. and that, everything else, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and I love how eclectic the cars are in the garage. I mean, you got a little bit of everything. I saw a major project right over yonder here that's not finished yet. It must be a Harris project. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, let's go meet Harry. Okay. Some members will actually have a couple of projects going at the same time, like Harry, whose Chevy truck has no place to hide. Harry, how are you? Yeah. What do we have here? What is this? This is a Chevrolet pickup, 79. 79 pickup, you wouldn't know it by now. <laughs> this is a nice interior. <laughs> you have the pickup and then you have these two really cool cars back here. Do you drive these cars? Yes, Camaro is for the rainy days and, and when the sun shines, then I drive this Firebird. Firebird's a convertible? Yes. Okay, I get it, all right. If this Firebird's an example of the kind of work Harry does, then his pickup is gonna be a real showstopper. And he loves the mint condition cars. Mint condition. Yeah. Yeah, these cars are nice. Yeah. You know what I like best about this place? Each garage space has as much character as each of the heck of a car guys. Every piece, every tool is exactly where it's supposed to be. My best buddy, Mike Kennedy, if he was here, this would be what his garage space would look like. <laughs> Tuomo and I have been hanging out this morning, and Tuomo officially, hi, welcome Hello. to Car Crazy. Nice to meet you, sir. But I love your story. It's a family story. Yeah, it is. I mean, you and your dad and your brothers. How long yeah. have you been coming here? I can't even remember the days. I was so little, so... Yeah, really, yeah. since you're a little guy. Mm -hmm. Now you have this bike. Yeah. Cool bike. Thank you. It, it, it is a Yamaha. Yeah, place. it you, is. Did anybody give you a bad time for well, being a Yamaha? A lot of Harleys yeah, around here. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I know. Well, but that's all we can afford right now. Yeah, so it's a cool maybe bike. Maybe one day we'll it have is, a Harley. It is very, very cool. So when you're here, you're not just working on this bike, 
But you work on each other's cars, right? Totally. You, so of all the group, who needs the most work all the time? Who needs Probably the, me. <laughs> <laughs> well, now we know how the car guys of Finland keep right on enjoying their cars during the brutal winters. Next up, the story behind the Finns love for American cars. Buying an American car was, it was a statement. And I've never seen before family car collection where every car tells a special story. Next up on McGuire's Car Tours. Welcome back to McGuire's Car Crazy. We're here in Helsinki, Finland, and the long, cold winter has finally come to an end. It's time for the car guys to get their favorite rides back on the road. But the car guys of Finland have found a way to enjoy their cars all year long. And our next guest enjoys his car as much as anybody, even though it's earned him the title of the Black Sheep. Well, I know it's a red car, but it is the only Japanese car in the whole garage here, so they call it the Black Sheep. And Heiki and I met a little earlier. Hi, Heiki. Hi. How you doing, my friend? <laughs> so it's the Black Sheep, huh? Yeah. They give you a bad time around here. Every now and then. Do they? Yeah. Really? So why are you a Japanese car guy? Small car, good yeah. to drive, yeah. fast. Yeah. Does this have the all-wheel drive? Yeah. So it's a fun car to drive. It, it is. It really Especially is. Especially in the winter time. I bet. So when you get this baby running, will you take her out on cruise nights? No, no, that's for Americans. Really? Yeah. So all these cruise nights, yeah. they're all American cars. Yeah, I have to drive by myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so kind of cool hanging out in this shop. I'm just having so much fun here today. Tell us what the experience is like. It's a brother who, so you're always welcome here. Yeah. And when you need help, you will get it. Yeah, yeah. Any time of the day or night? Yeah. And Always find someone here. And somebody's always here. Yeah. Well, they may call you the black sheep, but I love your passion, man. I really do. Heike, all the you. best to you, okay? What a fantastic glimpse of the car hobby over here. A special thanks to all the members of Hecuba for opening up their clubhouse and garage for the world to see. And it would not have been possible without the help of Finnish car guy extraordinaire, Tapio Valia. Tapio, thank you for making this possible for you're us. most welcome. This has been fantastic. I love this place. Um, now, this is not unique, you're telling me. We really? have these kind of places all over Finland. Wow, it's Every really city something. has a few of these. The camaraderie here, yeah. it's really special. They have all these different types of people, <laughs> and different types of cars. A lot of these cars have been owned for a lot of years. Oh yeah, I once mean, you get a hold on your car you want to have, then you don't <laughs> give up. <laughs> so you mentioned there's these garages all over Finland. Are they all kind of laid out like this with the, the general areas and having a lift and your individual garage areas with their own personality to it? That's pretty much what they are, yeah. The clubhouse is the most important. <laughs> I watch the guys hang out there, I can tell. They're home. Yeah, it's I mean, a, that's it's they're a hanging out home. with their family. Tapio, thank you. Thank you, thank you. This has been so special. Thank you very really much. Really special. It's I've been great time. having you here. Okay. Well, that alone was worth the trip. I so hope this idea catches on and starts popping up all over the world. I've seen a few versions of it in the States, but it's an idea that would work for car guys everywhere, regardless of their weather. And now, thanks to more insider information from Tafio, we're off on our next adventure. We're traveling a couple hours northeast of Helsinki, almost to the Russian border. And nestled in this forested farmland is a very different resort dedicated to the magical world of dressage horses. So you may be asking, why are we here? So here we are with Class Palmer and Class. Thank you so much. Thank you, Barry. For inviting us to this special place. So tell us what all goes on in this property. Main thing is the rehab center for Dressage, dressage horses. horses, yes. The animals, the horses you have here, they're like Ferraris. They are. They're worth the they trip are. to come out and see it. I've never <laughs> seen such magnificent <laughs> horses in my life. Thank you, Mary. <laughs> yeah. We have come a long ways because of your reputation, which precedes you. <laughs> okay. I mean, first for your passion. <laughs> okay. And Thank then you. for your cars. Okay. <laughs> but I understand that every car you have has a story to it. It is true, yes. If the car doesn't have the story, it's not in this collection. And here we are, hiding in plain sight amongst the horses and resort accommodations. The family has amassed a fabulous car collection that's never been seen on TV until now. Well, I can already see there's a treasure chest of cars. I mean, lots of different types of cars here. You have American classics, you have yes. European classics. 
you have competition cars. Yeah. So tell me, what's the criteria? I mean, what does a car have to do to be included in your collection? It's very <laughs> easy. It has to be drivable. Good, first I like thing. that. I like they that. have to have be connected with the family of the family company. Okay. Or they have to have an exceptional racing history. Okay, all right. You are legendary for all your stories. <laughs> and I, my goal in these few minutes is to capture some of those stories, <laughs> yeah, all right? Okay. Let's go look at your car. <laughs> when we come back, Klaus shows off his wonderful collection and shares the special stories that go with every car. Like this Mercedes that he actually knew way better than the person he bought it from. He tried to tell you it was Hitler's car. I said, no, 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 it's, it's my grandfather's car. You don't want to miss this. We're here at the world-famous Wykoski Helios Versage in Finland, and this place is amazing. These have to be some of the most magnificent horses I've ever seen, and the supporting facilities are equally as impressive. Of course, we came for an entirely different purpose, and that's to check out Klaus's family car collection and to hear the legendary stories that go with every car. And here we have a Marmon. They are great cars. They oh. are technically superb. They are very fast. We were there at the 100th anniversary yeah, yeah. of Indianapolis uh, yeah. race. The Wasp, the Mormon Wasp, won that first yes. Indianapolis race. Right. Very famous car. Right. And great history of this Technically, car. Technically, very, is, very This advanced. is a very tetrified yes, yes. car. And this next Mercedes, well, let's just say that this fabulous car is what ignited Klaus's car crazy gene. So tell me about this car. Wow. It's a, it's a Mercedes Benz, of course, 230. Uh, Family connection here, I suspect. Very much. It was my grandfather's car. So you remember this car as a lad, yes, as a yes, young person? Yes, I learned to drive in it. My father pulls me and my sister on skis no. on a frozen lake. And this no. is the same car. So has the car always been in the family then? Barry, it was sold off in 1959. And you want to hear yeah, what? what happened? What? what? Fascinating what? story. I'll, okay. show, I'll show you. Somebody created a Nazi story about Hitler's car. But you decide you're going to buy the car back. Yes, I was. So you went was, searching for it. I was searching for it. Okay, all right. And uh, okay. somebody told me it's impossible because a very rich, prominent person has it. He never sells cars. Okay. So I told him the story, and he said, "No, it's Hitler's car." He tried to tell you it was Hitler's car. Yeah, I said, "No, no, no, no. It's it's my grandfather's car. I'm not to drive in this car. <laughs> I know every bolt in this car." He said, "Okay, if that's a story, I'll sell it to you." Oh. But Barry, think about it, how much more uh, Hitler's car <laughs> is worth than my <laughs> grandfather's car. <laughs> Not to you. You know, there's nothing better than the family connections we have with our cars. What an awesome story. And there's another one right around the corner. What is this car? This is an Armstrong Sidley. Armstrong, yes, from the UK, sure. Yes, that's my father's car. It is. Yes. My goodness. It was an extremely fast car. Really? It was capable of 155 mm. kilometers an oh, hour. Oh, wow, okay. Moved right along. And yes. another Armstrong there, ah, and then that yes. was his as well? No, that is the car that never came. How's that? He ordered it, but Armstrong stopped production because of the problems yeah, in their aircraft right, industry. Right, right, because it was the aircraft business that yes, drove their business. Yes, yes right. So you never got it. So that was that last year and you never got the car? No, no, so I had to buy it now. Oh, you went on a mission so you could yes. finally have the car that your I father could. ordered. And while every car may not be a part of the family's heritage, cars like this one provide an amazing glimpse into history. All right, we talked family history. This is just yeah. interesting history. These are both post-war BMWs, only they're not. <laughs> they are both result of Second World War. Yeah, they are. A lot of factories was, were left on the eastern side. So they had so the building, they had the workers. They continued to build same cars, yes, with the same yes. people, with the same machinery, in eastern Germany in the 50s, exactly. as That's in that. 39. So this was really what they were called EMW. Underpowered cars. though, how much horsepower? 55 yeah, horsepower. Yeah, my goodness, but they Billy, look cool, they, they look they, fast. They, 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 look, they look fast. <laughs> Coming up is a car that Klaus had his heart set on as a child, but he had to wait decades before this Allard ended up in his own garage. It's a very famous car. It, it uh, took part two times in Monte Carlo. Okay, she caught your eye. Yeah, I must have been seven years old oh, at that, I love that time. I love it. Okay. My father saw it, so he said, 
class, I'm going to buy this car. And then he came back with a Mercedes. Why, why, he didn't buy the car? Where is all that? I said, no, no, I didn't buy it. It was a little bit too tight for it. I couldn't oh, get room no. enough. I was oh, so no. disappointed. No. Many of our viewers, they never even heard of an Allard before, but they can identify with your story because how many of our viewers saw a car when they were seven, eight years old and wanted that car all their life? And here's another Allard that may be the most important car to Klaus out of his entire collection. That is my dream car. This is here? This car raced <laughs> at on. the same time as the Jag we'll see later on. It was on the same track. Very car. This very car. Wow. Seeing a book here, is this, yeah. is this what she looked like? It looks like that, yes. Wow. This car will be put on the track again and raced again. Oh my goodness sakes. <laughs> so many great cars to see like this one that brought out the go fast car guy in class. This is my first racing car. Or this time capsule that may well be the most successful race car ever in Finland. Coming up next on McGuire's Car Tree. Welcome back to McGuire's Car Crazy. You know, we find the greatest cars and car guys in the most unsuspecting places all over the world. But who would have ever thought at a Finnish resort built around a rehabilitation center for dressage horses, we'd find a treasure chest of cars like this one. This is car crazy. So here we are with micro cars. Of course, we had the Metro Smith, the Heinkel. I did not yeah. know this one here. Germany was, after the war, prohibited to make aircrafts. So Messerschmitt and also Heinkel right. aircraft mm -hmm. work started making mm -hmm. three-wheelers. Mm -hmm. So tell me, what's the family connection with microcars? Ah, oh, yes, yes. <laughs> you, you have to I be 18 know. to get the driving license. Okay, okay. And But you can get a motorcycle license at 16. Okay, and, all right, all right. Uh, The so Messerschmitt is a motorbike. So, yeah. so, so I this had, was your first yes, car. Yes. Right, that makes sense. And it is a very fast car. Yeah. Well, I heard you drove some really fast cars. I do, <laughs> yes. It's not hard to see how passionate Klaus has become about his cars over the years. Just look at what he's created. But if there's one part of the car hobby that gets him most excited, it's vintage racing. This is my first racing car. Your first race yes, car. You race, raced your first race My racing in this career car. started really, here. Really, wow. And, uh, so uh, tell our viewers what it, it is. It has, it, it's a Lotus 7, okay. Super 7. So tell us about that first race. Yes, I was planning to drive last and slow just That'd to promote smart. the campaign. Okay. And suddenly uh, I was leading. Did you win the race? I won the race. And you won your first race? Yes, yes, I won the first race. Wow, you're pretty good. And, and yeah, I, that's what I thought. I was wrong, of course. <laughs> right. So I, I bought the Lotus Elan, which yes. is a real brute. Yes. First training, I went over the nose round because it was so incredibly difficult to drive. What does that mean, go the nose around? It's normally your car rolls this way. Yeah. <laughs> but I rolled the and other you, And you rolled this way? <laughs> yes. This is not yes. good. It's not good. No, that's it's not, not good. good at all. So what was Class. next? So, what so the was next, next was uh, BMW. Okay, the 2002. 2002. Okay. There's several of them here. So yes. tell me, what was your fascination of 2002? I was studying in Switzerland, and I brought a car from Switzerland to Finland. And that was also the car, my wedding car also. Oh, wow. I get and you. what we now have here is the track car. I, I, I got a lot of championships in Finland. <laughs> then came the Schnitzer. Oh, boy. Oh boy. And Schnitzer is a 16 valve technology. Wow. Very, very fast, fast car. car. This Schnitzer is the only Schnitzer in the world still being raced. And we found out that if we would blow the cylinder head or any crucial part of the engine, it would be the end. Oh. You couldn't get any spares anymore. Oh, it became Next thing too was, valuable. Yeah, it was too valuable, too valuable to, race to race anymore. And this next Jaguar XK120 racer has a story that for Klaus couldn't strike closer to home. So this is the famous XK120 I've been hearing about, huh? Yes, Barry, it's a 1950, and it was raced from 50 to 54. Great success. Mm. In 54, mm. my father bought it from this race driver. He used this car 
in the summer daily, visiting the factories on dirt That's roads. That's pretty cool. Yes, but there was no speed restriction at that time. Okay. He sold it. He and really did. Yes, he sold it and off it went. Oh my. Nice. And uh, I was chasing the car for year after year, and I found it like 35 years later. Oh my, when yeah. you get fixed in a car, yeah, yeah, you was... are going to get this car. Yes. So the Allard we saw, the red frame that you're rebuilding, was in the very same race with this car. Both cars were in that same very, race. Very the same race, Barry. <laughs> how amazing is that Jag? And how amazing is it to be connected to both the family and to Klaus's other favorite race cars? I love the stories of the cars tell, and this next classic Chrysler may be one of the most noted cars in all of Finland. Well, this car has been around the track a time or two, I think. <laughs> Barry, this car here, it is the most successful race car ever in Finland. Really? Really? Yes. So this was raced, I presume, in the United States first? Yes, it's an Indy car. Oh, okay. I chased it for like 20 years. Now that you have it, would you ever think of having yes. it rise from the dust and compete yes. again? I put it on the track, yeah, but it's not serious So racing. the beat just keeps going on yeah. and on yeah. and on. This has been a thrill. Yes. I, I, I heard about your personality and your passion, and, and we've come a long way out here into the country to find your collection, but man, am I glad we did. We're soulmates. It's, We're soulmates. Yeah. You yes. are what we classify as undeniably, <laughs> certifiably, <laughs> Car crazy. <laughs> okay. I, I admit, yes. Now that's a surprise I wasn't expecting. I know the cars are fantastic, but Klaus's personal reflections and stories are what makes this so much more than a car collection. A special thanks to Klaus and his family for allowing their car crazy genes to work their magic for generations. And a big thanks to Tapio for helping us find this special place and for introducing us to the heck of a car club and arranging our visit to their underground sanctuary. There's no question about it. Our new car guy friends here in Finland have made all of us just a little bit more. Car